Hey there, everyone. Thank you for joining me here tonight. Uh, tonight, we are going to make uh, some face masks. So uh, these are face masks that don't have the elastic tie. So if you don't have any elastic at home, these use uh, just fabric ties. And it also has a pocket in the back. So we will be going over how to make one of these tonight. So thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm typically here from at 8.30 p.m. Central Time every weeknight, and that is 9.30 uh, Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. I am live every evening here. And uh, I work on projects from beginning to end. Uh, tonight, we are making this uh, accordion face mask <laughs> because it's crazy town outside. I, you know, I was sewing this last night and was disgusted that I actually had to sew this thing. But I'm super happy to help. Uh, I'm making, I'm assembly line making a whole pile of them. I'm making 60 right now, and I'll show you guys that when we're done here. Uh, I'm making it for my husband's aunt, who is a nurse at the hospital, hospital by us. And they said all the masks they have are going to the COVID-19 nurses when they go in and out, then they have to get rid of them. So the whole rest of the hospital has no uh, personal protection uh, at all. So uh, she wanted 50 of them, so we are making them up, my husband and I, uh, tonight. And, this, and today I've been working on them, so I'll show you that as well. So I am doing this one for a couple reasons. Uh, I watched um, a video of a surgeon who was testing these out, and she liked the ones with the ties uh, because they, it was more adjustable for her. And uh, uh, I don't have any elastic at home, so there's that. And uh, also, we asked uh, John's aunt, my husband's aunt, if she would want a pocket in the back. Uh, you can put an extra filter in here. You could put a piece of flannel or another mask in there. And we asked if she would want that as a feature, and she said yes. So for those two reasons, I am doing this mask, and for just the speed that it can get done, the ease of it. It's, it's easy pieces, and I'll show you those, and we're going to go over the whole process. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I have your comments up here, so please ask whatever question along the way, and I'm going to flip you around, and we'll get started here. So thanks, guys. Okay, so here you can see part of the mass production going. Uh, we got a whole pile of strips going, and uh, John has been pressing on the other side here. Here I have my sewing machine, and here we are. So these are the pieces for this. I did in the description box... I do have the sizes of the materials, so you'll have all of that here, uh, you guys. So let me just zoom ahead here. All right, all right. I can see your, I can see all your comments down now. So uh, this is an adaptation of several of the ones that I saw, but the main one is that surgeon, which is her post is on my Facebook page at Penguin and Fish. Uh, she did it like this. The addition that we're doing is the pocket in there as well. And I think uh, one of the reasons that I like this is that you don't have to do this whole turn right side out like a lot of the patterns have. So we'll go over that now. So we have a 9 by 6 piece. This is going to be my front fabric. And then I have two pieces for the pocket. I have another 9 by 6 piece. So this is the same size as that. And then I have a nine by nine square. So these make the pocket. The pocket is actually two different uh, sizes. So if I open this up, you can see that one pocket is longer and then this one is a little bit shorter, one of the pocket um, sides. And that's because we did a test of just doing them the same size, but the slit was right in the middle and it got in the way of your mouth and nose and it was really uncomfortable. So we edited the pattern and um, made it a little bit lower. So now it's at like chin level instead. And again, I find this crazy that we even have to do this video. It is insane out there, people. Um, all right, 
<laughs> it just disgusts me whenever I think about it. So we have those pieces, easy to cut. Like I said, these are the same, nine by sixes. This is nine by nine. Uh, I am using just some uh, cotton uh, fabric that I had. If you have flannel, that supposedly is very good for the inside. So um, I'm just using a bunch of fabric, white fabric that I happen to have. The last thing you're gonna need are two strips. These are for the, um, the ties. You're gonna need two strips that are two inches by about 36 inches, 35, 36 inches. So I have two of those. We're gonna actually make these into bias tape. So I'll show you a trick on doing that today as well. Um, if you have just bias tape around at your house, feel free to use that. It'll be way faster and easier. Okay, so I'm gonna put those to the side for now. Uh, we're gonna start on the construction of, of these. So, all right, this guy's ready to go. So what we need to do first is take our two inside pieces or the back of the mask and we are going to uh, fold them in half both the long way. So like that. So we still have the nine inches on either side here. All right. So I'm gonna match those edges and let's just give that a press. All right, I'm checking out your comments, guys. So thanks for, thanks for joining. Oh yes, oh my cheeks are rosy. I know, Bonnie. Uh, I think it's stress actually, Bonnie. Um, I don't know. I have been working all day though. My eyes are a little glassy because I've been around just all this fabric all day long. So we spent, we spent the morning cutting fabric. So last night at like midnight, we started this project and we figured out what we wanted to do for the pattern. Me and me and John, my husband are doing this together. And then today we cut and pressed a whole pile of pieces. So we have been working on this all, all day and I guess it's showing rosy cheeks and glassy eyes. Okay, here are our pocket pieces for the back. All right, next up, we have the front here. Uh, oh, one thing, if you, when you're pressing this, if you're using a fun pattern fabric, which is great, use, uh, have the nice side on the outside. So you should be able to see your pretty part of the fabric um, on the outside here. So the, the wrong side of the fabric will be, will be on the inside. All right. So I'm gonna place with right sides together. So I'm placing this on the nice side of the fabric. First of all, choose what's top and bottom. So whatever you want on the top, that's gonna be the part that has a little bit more edge here. And when you open it up like that, it'll, it'll, um, you'll see the whole picture. So have your top of the piece here, and uh, then the raw edge of this big one. So there's a fold on this side, and then there's the raw edge over here. The raw edge you're gonna place on top of this guy here, and we're just gonna sew that edge. So let's go to the machine, and then actually we're gonna do the same on the bottom. We're gonna sew this on the bottom edge with right sides together. So let's do that. I am on my 19, I think it's actually a late 30s sewing machine here. And again, it just got to me a little bit when I was working on this, because this machine is from World War II, the World War II era. So ugh, it just, someone could have been using this for a wartime effort back then. And that just is crazy to me. All right, I am gonna put a little back stitch in here. And then we'll go forward again. This sewing machine sounds like a lawnmower. 
All right, so I'm just sewing uh, just a straight stitch, and that is it. All right, let's put a little backwards stitch that just kind of holds things in place. You don't actually need this for this design, but uh, especially if you're doing a whole pile of these at once, like you could just keep going and going and going, and I'll show you. Uh, I'm kind of at that stage now with my the 60 that we're doing. Uh, so I'll show you that next. All right, so that's that's the top. Let's do the bottom as well. So I'm going to just place, again, the raw edges. So I should have three raw edges here and the pretty fold should be on the inside. Let's do this side. Back tack. <laughs> Listen to that motor go. Oh, Gracie says that she's cut out her fabric and bias strips. Awesome. Yes, Kathy. So this is a pretty easy design. What I like about it is that you can, it's easy to cut all the pieces. You can cut a whole pile of them at once. So this pattern is nice if you are stitching for nurses or you're wanting to make a lot at once. All right, let's go back a little bit and forward. All right. Now back to the pressing mat. All right, so we basically now have two flaps and the center here. So I wanna press these seams. So I'm gonna get my iron here and we're gonna to press towards the inside. Yes, Barbara, so uh, like I said, uh, um, John, my husband's aunt, lives near us in town here and she works at the hospital and they don't have any masks. So she works in, uh, like with all the new babies and moms and stuff, and they don't have any masks because they are all being used for the COVID-19 patients. Um, so the rest of the hospital basically doesn't have anything. Like literally they don't have any masks. So this is, even though these aren't perfect, like this doesn't protect against everything. Um, it protects supposedly about 50% uh, against 50% of the COVID-19 sized particles, which is better than 0%, which is what they're getting now. So um, this is better than nothing for sure. So they'll basically be used in the rest of the hospital while the, the like um, N95 masks are being used for the COVID-19 patients. Okay, so I am now going to flip these to the inside and we're gonna press it again. So I'm just kind of getting like a nice edge there. Right up along the edge. Oh, it sounds like the Facebook feed might have frozen a little bit. Let's see. I still have comments coming in it looks like. Hold on a sec. All right. So that's the one side. You can see I'm, I'm right on the edge here. So there's no turning anything inside out or right side out on this pattern. And I hate doing that. So <laughs> I'm happy about that. All right, so there we are. Got that nice edge. One thing we want to make sure of now is that the big flap is on the outside. We don't, we don't want it like this. So big flap on the outside. All right, now we are going to stitch all the way around, like the entire way. What's that, what that's going to do is it's going to give us a nice top stitch on the, on the top and bottom and that's gonna hold this fold in place. So if we look at this, 
it's this stitch line here. It's holding that fold so it doesn't like balloon open. So it's keeping it nice and flat. So that's the purpose of the top stitching. Plus it looks really nice. Instead of only top stitching the top and the bottom, we're going to go all the way around because when we go on the side, we're securing, um, we're securing this uh, pocket in place. So we're going to go all the way around now. I think I'll stitch on, eh, we'll stitch on this side. To the machine. All right, let's, let's start at the bottom. So I'm just starting at the bottom right corner. And now for top stitching, you don't want to do a full quarter inch. I'm doing more of like an eighth inch. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not as big. All right. I am going to back tack. That just means going forward and backwards. It helps secure the stitches a little bit more. And let's just go down this edge. So this machine is not great at stopping in place, but I think we'll go right there. As long as you're within a quarter inch of the edge here, you're going to be fine. All right, so I'm going to rotate. I'm making sure that uh, my flap is still in place. If you want, you could throw a clip in here before you start just to make sure it stays, but I'm, I'm not doing that. We're just going to go. Rotate and now we're going to top stitch up on top. All right. And last bit here. a stitch. This will all get secured later, so if you don't back stitch here, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's snip that and take a look at what we got here. All right, so you guys, our pocket is basically done. <laughs> we are on the home stretch already of this, if you can believe it. So here, if we flip around, here is our pocket. Easy peasy. Uh, and uh, we're on to the next step, you guys. So uh, uh, you know what? I think why don't we prep our prep our bias strips right now? I will show you a trick for that because we are going to need those in the next step. So here's, I have one prepared already. So this is basically what we're making. Our long strips that we just did, this guy's coming, coming undone a little bit. Our long strips, we need to actually <laughs> fold in half like this. So here's, here's the strip. And we're folding both of these long edges to the inside. So that can seem pretty intense. It's, quite the job, um, but I have a trick for it. It does give us these really gorgeous um, ties though, which I think are really nice. If you want to do the elastic versions, that's totally fine. There's a lot of tutorials out there for the elastic ears, but again, that surgeon mentioned that she liked the ties better because they were more adjustable and the rubber band ones didn't fit her very well, the elastic ones. So she liked the ties and that's what we're doing. We're making them for nurses and we want to make it how they want it. So that's what I'm doing. All right. So this is one that's already done. I'm going to use that one, but I will show you a trick for making these. So here's another one of my strips. 
Uh, to start out, I am just going to give it a press. Make sure that all those little kinks are out of it. Alrighty. And now I am going to go to one edge of, of my, my pressing mat here. And I'm going to just give it a little start. So we're just going to do uh, the inside or just, just a little bit like two inches just to start. So I'm folding both edges to the middle. If there's a little gap in there, that's actually nice. You don't want it very big, but you don't, you don't want to like overlap it like this. You want, you want it next to each other or that little bit of a gap. So what we're trying to do is get both edges about the same. We're going to give that a little press just to get it going. So now here's a trick if you don't have the bias strip maker. If you have two pins, uh, you can pin one on this side, and I'm going at like a, a sharp angle, one on this side, and then the other up on the other side. You're making sort of a channel that uh, your fabric can go through. And now all I have to do is pull. And all I'm doing with over here is just checking to make sure that it stays kind of equal. And after I get pulling on it a little bit, we are going to just press it down. And that's it. So we'll pull a little bit more. We just want to make sure that this is trying to stay in the middle. Our, our gap is in the middle. Once it feels like it's bubbling up a bit, let's press it down again. This is so easy. It looks crazy to have to do this, but uh, I actually find this easier than actually using a bias strip maker. So this is called a bias strip. Um, you can purchase pre-made bias strips and that would work perfectly, perfectly well for this. So this is probably the part that takes the longest. So we have all of ours pre-cut and while I'm tonight, while I'm sewing, uh, sewing the rest of our 60 that we're making, John's going to be, John's mastered this bias strip making. <laughs> so he actually, he actually has um, a couple a couple going here. Oh, um, Kathy wants to see the pins more closely. I will do that as soon as we're done here, just because I don't want to move this and have it all fall apart. <laughs> all right, but I, I'll show you kind of the positioning of them. Oh, Jenny, that's that's perfect. So Jenny says that she cut her fabric using the, the width of the fabric, which is typically like 42 inches. She did not cut on the bias. I did not cut on the bias either. So um, I'm calling this a bias strip, but that's a little different than what we're actually doing. A bias uh, means like cutting fabric at a 45 degree angle. So it's super stretchy. That's called, that's a bias. Um, I just cut mine with a straight cut. You definitely do not need a, a pure, a true bias, you know, to have it be stretchy. I am just cutting the, the width of the fabric as well. And then I, I actually cut it down to 36 inches. If you have a yard of fabric, a yard of fabric is 36 inches. So you can cut it the height of that yard versus the, the width. All right, we are just about done here. So I'm going to kind of grab it at the end here so it doesn't get away from me. Let's get the rest here. Yeah, that's true, Jenny. Jenny says that if the ties, she did the width of the fabric, which is usually 42 inches. Um, ooh, burnt myself. Uh, she says that if the ties are a little long, the user can cut them. That is totally, totally true. All right, there we are. That is our bias strip or our, our folded in strip. So that wasn't that hard and it's kind of fun. So here is, 
here's a kind of a close-up of what we got going on here. I just crisscrossed them. All we're doing is making a channel. If you find that it's getting too scrunched, just move it a little bit wider. Uh, so I moved it a little bit up and that should do the trick. So these are just just normal stick pins. If you don't have, I mean, I'm using a wool pressing mat, but you could just put a blanket on your on your board and just pin it into a blanket. Or if you have a fabric covering for your, your board, you could do that too. So there we go. That's our bias strip. And, uh, and then I'm going to just use that one that John already did earlier. So I don't have to do two. So we are at the next stage. And that is the scrunching stage. So we are going to scrunch up these sides. And I have some wonder clips here that I'm going to use to clamp them together. But if you have, have pins, that works well. These work amazingly well, though. So if you do have wonder clips, I would use, use these. They're like really strong little clamps. All right. So I'm going to check. So that's still the top, the big, the big pieces on the top. Here's my top. I'm actually going to rotate it to do this crimping. So I'm going to grab it about, I, I'm not doing measurements for any of this. You're just, I'm just doing it like by the look of it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to make two crimps in this. So I'm kind of holding it about a third of the way down. I'm going to pull on both sides. And then I'm putting my uh, index fingers here and I'm just kind of pulling and folding it up. That's it. Don't worry about the pocket on the back or anything. And I only folded it uh, maybe a half inch or so. I'm going to take a clamp or a pin and let's just grab that thing. These are still raw edges, by the way. So these are unfinished edges here. So let's just adjust this side again. There we go. And uh, let's clamp that. And now again, we're going to go about halfway in between those two parts. And I'm going to pull on it again. And we're going to give that a little bit of a crimp too. So there we go. I think maybe I'll go a little higher. All right, there we are. We found that if you leave this a little bit bigger, well, I guess it depends per person. So you can have it a little scrunched up more, a little less, uh, see what you like. Uh, this is about where, where we're at. I'll measure this quick for you if you're curious how wide I'm doing this. But again, I'm just kind of doing it, oops, doing it by, uh, by eyeballing it. It does not, you don't need to mark a ton of marks all over it, but let's grab a ruler just in case you wanted to know. All right, where this is what it looked like. We're about at the three inch mark here. All right, so that's that. Next up, we are gonna add our bias strips already. And I'm gonna do both at the same time. So first of all, I need to find, this is a long strip. I need to find the, the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the two ends together. There we go, I have it folded and I'm just gonna kind of crimp, crimp this edge. And that's just so when I open it back up, I can see that fold and I know that's the center. So I'm gonna take the center of one of these, I'm just eyeballing it again, and I'm going to place it, I'm gonna line up this center with about this center, but I'm only gonna put it on the first half of this edge. So I have this edge is kind of open there yet. All right, I'm gonna put my hand down here and I'm gonna remove these clips and I'm gonna flip this guy around. I'm kind of, I'm trying to line up the top edge with the bottom edge and it's covering, it's covering up our raw edge, which is awesome. And then I'm gonna re-clip -re or repin, whatever you got. All right, that's looking good. Boop. All right, so this guy is ready to sew. I am going to do the other side right away. 
these clamps are strong enough that if I if this dangles around or hits some things or get mess messes up, uh, these will still hold. They're pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna get that middle. Okay, so again, I'm gonna kind of line up the middle there. Oh, there's some good information. So one of our local hospitals asked for light fabrics, so it's more obvious if they're, if they're dirty. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that's the only one you've seen request light fabric. Uh, so another request that I've seen is to use flannel on the inside. I don't have any, so I'm using what I have. Um, I suspect that's for comfort because it's soft. Really, that Cambridge study that I uh, referenced in the post, of, post earlier, that kind of is saying that this front layer, I mean, the, the, the one layer is doing the job. The one layer gets you the 50% protection um, from that size particle, from a, a COVID-19 size particle. The extra layer adds about another 2%. Um, here we go. We can kind of, we can take a peek now. Now that we're all clamped, we can take a peek at how this is looking. Uh, so with, with this way, they're actually getting three layers of fabric because we have this folded fabric here. So there's actually three layers of protection here. And then someone could still put in another filter. So they could put in, um, you know, uh, another mask, like a real mask, or they could put in a, a flannel piece here or a tissue or something in there as well. So there's, there's that option. Uh, but yeah, so there's three layers of fabric here. It's still breathable. Like I haven't, we didn't notice any horrible ability to not breathe. Um, and, and there is, you know, really that front layer is the real layer of protection. All right. So we are clipped. All we have to do now is sew the bias strips. So I'm going to start with this one. We're going to fold it up and sew all the way along. And when we like by folding it up, like that, matching those edges. When we get here, we're gonna put a couple extra stitches in there just to hold these edges. These edges will get pulled on a lot. So you want to reinforce that. And then we'll just go to the end and we'll do the other side and we will have a, we'll press it. You don't need to, but we'll give it a little press and then we'll be done. So, all right, I'm gonna head to the machine again, you guys. So quick to make these. Uh, when I'm done showing you this, I will show you the assembly line that I have going. So again, one of the reasons we picked this design and kind of adapted it a little bit is because we could make a lot in a short amount of time with the parameters we wanted. And we wanted the ties as a parameter and that pocket as a parameter. All right. So before we get started, I want a nice, I don't want a raw edge here. If it ends up being a raw edge, that's fine. Like like uh, Julie said earlier, if you if they have it too long, they can just cut it. It will stay together. It's not going to be an issue. But if you want to do a nice edge, open up your bias strip and fold it in just a tish. I have about a quarter inch and then fold it back. It's a little awkward, but it does make a nice edge. All right, so I folded it in. Now I'm going to fold it again. This is where we're putting the two edges together. See, this should be natural. It should kind of want to do this. We're matching up those edges and see, this is what it'll look like on the top there. All right. So let's get started here. Get in the machine. So I am going to Everything I back tack now, I'm going to do a couple times just to make sure it's solid and holding. So, come on, little guy. There we go. All right, I'm going forward a little, then we'll go back. We'll go forward again. I think I'll go backwards one more time. All right, now I'm going to just sew along the edge. You guys, if you are in Facebook, okay, now I'm seeing you guys, and now I'm seeing your stuff again. So 
If you guys are having, I'm on both YouTube and Facebook right now, so if you're having trouble in one, check out the other. That one might work better. So again, I'm just going at about an eighth inch. I'm not doing the full, the full quarter inch here. I'm just doing like that eighth inch. Maybe a little bit bigger than an eighth. Does not have to be perfect. All right, and I'm just stopping to re-put the edges together. Make sure you are getting both both edges though. That's gonna be important once we get up to the actual face face mask again. There, we're getting to the mask. I'm kind of dragging it along here. There we go, now it's up on the machine. Might have to fold this side in a little bit so it's not in the way. All right, so I'm gonna remove this clamp. It's in the way now. And uh, here's where I'm gonna go, right where it connects. That's where I'm gonna go back and forth a bunch of times. That's where you need it secure. Because there's gonna be a lot of tugging and wear at that spot. So I'm gonna go forward and back a few times here. You can hear it kerchunking over the edge. Oh yeah, so Jenny and Gretchen, that's what I've heard as well. Um, I've heard that we don't have to, you don't actually have to wash these before giving them to um, wherever you're giving them to the hospital uh, because they will sterilize them all. Uh, one reason you would want to wash them is if you're using fabric that might shrink, you want to pre-shrink it. All right, there I'm at this other edge now. Let's uh, go back and forth over that. Ooh, come on, guy. There. Forward. Let's go over that again. Ooh, it wants, it needs a little bit of help to get over that big bunch, so I'm just going to kind of pull on it a little bit. There we go. Now we're good. All right, let's sew to the end now. Oop, put it in forward. Oh, but I love this. I love that we're just securing that raw edge with this tie, so we didn't have to turn anything right side out. You get these nice pretty ties. So we're going to just cruise down here. Again, I'm keeping those edges together. And as we get to the edge, one thing not to forget, and I've already forgotten once and it's annoying, when you get about here, remember you gotta open this up again. Flip that edge over a quarter inch. Again, this is totally optional but it does make a nice, clean, pretty edge. Flip the other one in. There we go. And now flip them back together. There we are. So again, I it just drives me crazy that this, my actual sewing machine could have been used in World War II doing this exact same crazy thing that we're doing here. That just boggles my mind. And it, it, it's like, wow, that's neat. And then at the same time, it's like, this is crazy that we're doing this. <laughs> crazy. All right, but there we are. You can uh, snip the edge, the little fuzzles off of there. Let's get the fuzzle on the other side, and uh, then we'll see what, what this looks like here. We have to do the other side yet, but let's take a look at, at it here. So there, our edge is perfectly enclosed. You know, that was that raw edge in there. It is, um, we've secured over uh, where the two connect, so when that pulls, that should hold very well. But yeah, I love that. I love how the bias strip just holds all that garbage on the inside here. So let's do the other side and then that's it. 
we have done one. And this will definitely, if you are making a whole pile of these, it will go faster for sure uh, when you assembly line do it. It, it will go faster uh, per piece, ultimately. It won't go faster the whole job, but the um, per piece speed will, will go down. And I, I'm in the total middle of that process now. So uh, I will show you where where I'm at, <laughs> and then you'll see how much we have to do yet. Uh, we are gonna work on this tonight. I'm hoping to get as far as we can. Uh, we got everything cut this morning. Sometimes my machine needs a little push to get started. All right, again, I'm going back and forth a few times here just to make this extra secure. All right, now let's cruise down the edge again. Again, these bias strips, they just want to be together. They're gonna fold really easily. So you don't need to, you don't need to pre-press this. You know, we, we made them like this. You don't need to additionally press them like that. I, I tried that and I didn't find it any easier than just folding it as I sew. So don't bother doing that whole extra step. That's a waste of time. Oh, thanks, Marlene. Oh yeah, so for the fabric, I am using a whole pile of old scraps that I had from my old, um, from my fabric lines uh, that I did several years ago. So this was actually a test print that came out twice, like two times as big as what it was supposed to, but I kind of liked it and uh, I finally get to use it for something. Yeah, this is a great project if you have extra scraps around for sure. All right, taking this guy off. All right, we're going over that edge where they meet. That's where it needs the most secure amount of stitches. So I'm going back and forth several times. All right, that's probably good. Now I am kind of pushing to make sure that this edge is right up against this edge on the inside. If it feels like it's not all the way there, just give it a push. Oh, remove that other clip. I'm just making sure that my bottom fold and top fold are matching here. All right, now we're ready. One more time, make that extra secure. And we are just about there, you guys. Let's go down the last route here. Again, I'm about an eighth of an inch in. I'm not a full quarter inch. As long as you get both edges in there, you'll be fine. Oh, you guys, I almost forgot. Ah! Let's flip this edge. I was reading comments and then forgot to flip this edge. So I did that one other time too. Uh, for, for kids, I think you can just, uh, reduce the size by about an inch on, on all sides, probably. Um, I have not done one of those since I'm, mine are going specifically to nurses at our, at our local hospital. Um, but yeah, I think you can just reduce the size of the square and the rectangles by about an inch and you'd probably be good to go. All right, let's do that nice backwards and forward securing here. All right, 
and I think that is that, you guys. We are done. Let's take a look at it. Well, I guess we're not quite done. Let's snip those fuzzles off. Don't need those. All right, let's take a look at it. So that's it, you guys. That is the mask. So it does take a little longer than the elastic band ones, but I do love, um, you know, I do think this is very functional, being able to tie it. Uh, then you can get the different, uh, you know, if you have a different size head, uh, and then it's not around your ears, so it's not chafing your ears. Um, but yeah, I love how it just secures that in. And then here it is, all poofed out puzzles out of there and again the pocket totally uh, laying flat and just pop it open and again you can put an extra filter layer in there and you just pull it and it all just closes up again and uh, totally washable um, I, I also did not put a metal piece in that I know a lot of them are doing because uh, someone mentioned that it's harder to sterilize at a hospital uh, with that extra piece in there. So I just left it all fabric as well. Oh, and if you want, just to make it extra nice before you give it to, uh, to someone, you can press the pleats in front. Again, totally not necessary, but it does make it look sharp. Awesome. So there you are, you guys. Uh, let me show you quick the uh the assembly line i have going on here so i am at the stage here here's my assembly line i am at the stage where i am taking my folded pieces so this is the lower part of the mask john john pressed all of these i have 60 of them these are about 30 and i'm chain piecing them so you can see i'm sewing one right after the other. These are the big ones. I already sewed that on. Now I'm sewing the small ones. These ones are done. So let me just show you that quickly. This is called chain piecing and it's when you just sew one thing right after the other. It is a great assembly line technique um, that works really really well if you want to make a ton of these like, like I am. I'm making 60 of these. So all right this is the piece. I'm gonna grab you know, I'm getting those raw edges together like we did earlier. Let's get started. So I am not even going to back tack these. Remember this is, oops, I lost my thread there. Uh, this is the part that gets put into, hold on a sec here, the part that gets put into the bias strip. So it's, uh, it ends up being super secure. All right, let's get that thread in there again. Get a nice edge. This machine, you have to thread it through this tiny hole here, and then it side loads into, into the needle here. I did oil this machine and clean it today, so it should be a happy, happy machine today. All right, now let's do it. There we are. All right, just because I don't think I started on the edge, I'm gonna back up a little bit. There we go. All right, this is chain piecing. Let's do one strip here. <laughs> My whole machine is moving on me. All right, then get your next piece. I already have it connected from from when I chain piece the other side. I will I will clip those apart when I'm done. Grab the next piece from the stack, and all you're gonna do is leave a little little gap there. But then you just start up the next piece, and they're all like linked in a long chain, and that's why it is called chain piecing. There, and, and then I would get the next piece until my stack is done or until I run out of pieces. And so 
here is my pile that is already that far. <laughs> so these, I will snip, I'll snip all of these apart. So I'll just take a scissors and snip. And these are at the stage where I press open and press them around. And then I will top stitch. I'll do chain piecing, top stitching for a while. So that is where I'm at uh, with the progress on the 60. I'll keep you guys updated on that. But for now, why don't we call it an evening? So I'm going to flip you guys around. All right. Hello, hello again. Uh, so thank you guys so much for joining me here tonight on this Facebook Live and this YouTube Live. I appreciate you being here. Here is the finished mask again. So I'll put it on even though it drives me crazy to have that we have to wear these. But So this is about the size. I'm not going to tie it, but you can. So that's what it looks like on a small person like me. <laughs> and by having, by having that pocket low like this, it doesn't get in the way of your mouth or anything like that. That's, we did a prototype where we had it right in the middle and it was so annoying. So now it's a little bit lower and it shouldn't be as annoying, but you can still open it up and have, you can put something else in there if, if need be. It was a little small on John, but it still covered everything. I think it'd probably be a little bit big on a child, so you could reduce the size a little bit. Uh, luckily, the measurements are so easy. You just, if you uh, make one little part bigger, uh, just do it with the, that interior piece as well. You can make it any size so easily. So uh, if you are doing that, I'd love to see, I'd love to see if you're working on these. Let me know uh, what's happening over by you. Uh, let me know in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on, on Facebook. So be sure to uh, go over there and click join. I'd love to see what you're making. Uh, so thanks so much, you guys. Uh, again, I hope, I hope if you can, uh, you know, call your local hospital, see what they are in need of. It's crazy that they need any of this stuff. It's insane. And it drives me crazy that us at home are having to provide <laughs> the nurses these, but we're doing it. So <laughs> thanks again, you guys. I appreciate you being here. Uh, if you have questions, ask it over in Facebook or on YouTube, and I will see if I, if I can answer them for you guys. And I'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, we'll be sewing some more. I'll probably be making more of these. So thanks again, you guys. Good night.